Well, dear friends, we continue in this amazing book of Job, this book of Old Testament wisdom that's talking to us about uh, how a righteous man suffers. And we've established from the first chapter that Job was a great and righteous man in his day and time and, and place, but, uh, but yet he suffered greatly. Let's keep looking here. Uh, it says that, again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. So this is telling us about the heavenly council and and that there in, in realms above, we have angelic beings that are coming before God, including fallen angels, including Satan. So they come before God and, and here the Lord addresses Satan, from where have you come? And Satan says, from going to and fro on the earth, from walking up and down on it. That doesn't sound really great. Um, and yet then here comes the Lord back to Satan. And again, we're, we're somewhat alarmed to hear this. Have you considered my servant Job? We'd really rather Job's name not be mentioned again. We don't want to draw attention to him. But then we have to remember that our Lord knows what is right. He understands these realms that we do not. And so here it, he says, again, it's sort of vindicating Job. He says, uh, there's none like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man who fears God and turns away from evil. He still holds fast his integrity. Great, great testimony here. Although you incited me against him to destroy him without reason. So what's Satan's response? Skin for skin. Remember, that was the one thing that the Lord said to Satan in the previous time, that there would be a limit. Uh, concerning what Satan could do against Job. He said in, in chapter 1, only against him do not stretch out your hand in terms of his own body. But now he says, okay, not enough. Skin for skin. All that a man has, he will give for his life. But stretch out your hand and touch his bone and his flesh and he'll curse you to his face. Same challenge again, but now this time in terms of the pain that will happen to his body and his life. But again, the Lord puts a limitation on what he allows. He says, behold, he is in your hand. Only spare his life. So that's, that's the thing. It, Satan would have wanted to, as, as we read in the New Testament, uh, he would have wanted to sift you like wheat. He'd, he'd, he'd like to ha grind you down to even um, have your life gone. But, but no, the Lord will not allow it. And so what happens to, to Job? Loathsome sores coming upon his body, all over his body. And, and then his wife addresses him. And, and she, she maybe would just want to have him out of his pain right now. He sa uh, she says, do you still hold fast your integrity? Curse God and die. In other words, just, just say something that would bring the immediate wrath of God upon you and your life will be over. And that, that's not the way we want to go, you know, but that, that's what she says. And he says to her, you speak as one of the foolish women would speak. Shall we receive good from God? And, and shall we not receive evil? Wow, what a response. And, it, and then we have this, this little commentary. In all this, Job did not sin with his lips. So that was what he said at the time. Of course, it's devastating. He's lost so much, including his children. And now his health is in horrible sh uh, state. And yet he's able... To, to say, look, I'm ready not just to receive good, but evil from God. So now Job's three friends come to see him. We're going to have the, uh, the largest part of the book is going to be his interaction with these three friends. And so we, we have their names, Eliphaz, Bildad, and Zophar. They come and they hear about what's happening to Job. They make an appointment with one another in order to comfort him in his time of trouble, to show sympathy and and they, when they see him from a distance, they, they just can't believe what they see. Let's, let's say it's just maybe 20 feet. And it's like, is that really Job? Wow. Look at him. Uh, and they raise their voices. They wept. They tore their robes. And so they're mourning. They, they sprinkle dust on their heads toward heaven. And they sat with him uh, on the ground. And they did this apparently for seven days, seven nights. So that's, wow. How many of us would have that level of commitment to be there in the midst of uh, sorrow with someone else and to, to mourn with someone who's mourning. And no one spoke a word to him 
for they saw that his suffering was great. Look, we see something here about the kind of world that we live in. It's, it's a sad world. And we see something about spiritual realms, maybe spiritual warfare, that we find we really don't understand. And, and you know, we, we don't want to be ignorant of uh, an enemy, spiritual enemy's devices. We're told to, to, to be aware. But, and also, we're also uh, recognizing there are things happening that you and I are... We don't, we don't know what's really going on there. So we say, the Lord rebuke you, as the New Testament says. Father, we, we put all this before you, and Lord, help us to, to be sympathetic to others, um, maybe often just to place our hands over our mouths and, and then to learn how to pray to you for others in deep need. In Jesus' name, amen. Blessings, friends.